Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is reach the nth point and it is an easy level problem. So the problem says that we have been given n points, right? So we have been basically given the value of n and we can move ahead by step 1 or 2, right? So we can either take one step or two step. We are starting from point 0 and we have to tell the number of ways to reach point n and obviously we have to output it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7, right? So basically, let me just demonstrate here. Uh, so we have an array. Let's say this is point 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is also a very simple DP. Let's say this is our DP array, right? Or when the first time you calculated, you must have not even known that it is DP. You just have figured it out by the name of Fibonacci series, right? So we just have to calculate the nth Fibonacci number here, and we'll understand how it is the Fibonacci number. So the very first thing that they say is we start from uh, index zero or point zero. So the number of ways to reach point zero is obviously one. Right. Now, to reach point 1, you can either take one step or two steps from the position 0. So, if you take one step, you will reach here, right. But if you two steps, take two steps, you will not reach here, right. So, basically, you, there is only one way to reach point 1 as well. For point 2, you can either move one step here or two steps from here, right. So, either from you can reach from 0 by taking two steps or from 1 by taking one step. So, the total number of ways will be two ways, right. For point 3, for point 3, the total number of ways is 2 plus 1. Because from 1 you can take 2 steps or from 2 you can take 1 step. So total number of ways is 3. Now for step 4, the total number of ways will be 3 plus 2. This is going to be 5. Because from 2 you can take plus 2 steps or from 3 you can take plus 1 step. Right, like this. So now again, let me just do one more. So from 5, you have 5 plus 3 that is 8 steps. So let us just verify for n is equal to 4 the answer is 5 and for n is equal to 5 the answer is 8. Right. So uh, what we uh, just simply did was for each step i we took the answer of i minus 1 plus i minus 2. Right. So let us say this is dp. So this is a very familiar thing that we generally do that is this is the Fibonacci series. Right. So, we just have to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. I told you why do we need to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. You do not even have to think about it. You can just try forming your answer and then you will realize that it is the Fibonacci series only. Right. Now, again, uh, you can call it DP or you can call it whatever you want because we are using previously calculated uh, information to calculate our new answer. Right. Now, again, we do not even need the DP array. What we can do is we can just simply maintain two variables A and B which will be stating the previous two uh, numbers. Let us say I want to calculate the number C. So, the number at i minus 1 will be B and the number at i minus 2 will be A, right. So, again, we could have also done this thing by not taking the DP array and only taking some simple variables in the problems that we encountered recently, like yesterday's problems or the day before yesterday's problem. We could have also taken variables there, but like uh, it would have been much more complex at that point in, the, in those questions. Now, in this particular question, it is very simple and easy to see those variables. So, that is why I am also talking about taking directly variables instead of calculating the whole DP array, right. So, what we can now do is, we can have two variables A and B, both of them will be initialized with 1, right, and B will store our final answer. Or if you want, you can store your final answer in A as well, the, uh, like it does not make any difference, the number of iterations will be different, that different, that is just the thing, right. So, let us say, if B is your answer, so initially you will have your answer for n is equal to 1. If you want to calculate your answer for n is equal to 2, what you will have to do is you have to add both of these. So let us say C is equal to A plus B. Now A will have to be updated with B and B will be updated with C. Right. So you see that uh, a, new a new sum was calculated and both of these numbers were shifted one place to the right. So this is how you could easily solve this problem. You just have to find out the nth Fibonacci number. Right. So, let me show you the code that I have done. I have taken two long long integers a and b, both of them initialized with 1 and uh, let us say I have a mod value initialized with 10 to the power 9 plus 7. Now, I am starting my loop with 1 and i is less than n, 
right so this is very important thing that you will have to take care of that if i am setting my final answer as b then my loop will be less than n right so you see that uh, i am currently like even before starting the for loop the value of b already has the answer for n is equal to 1 so i start by loop from 1 and go till only less than n right so this is something that you will have to take care of depending on what you choose your answer to be if you choose your answer to be a then it can be less than n plus 1 right now uh, let's say answer c long long c is equal to a plus b and then you set your a as b and then you set your b as c so you just update uh, the values and at the end you can just return your uh, value of b so in case you are not able to understand this part let me just do a quick try run what will happen so let's say a and b are like this they both are 1 right so now i set my c is equal to let's say let's calculate for n is equal to 4 right so the current value of i is 1 right i is 1 a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 and then we calculate c as uh, 2 right so now i will update a as 1 and b as 2 right so this is exactly what we have done in the code now let's say i is equal to 2 uh, remember we have to go till less than n like less than 4 So, if you have to go till less than uh, 4, what will you do now? a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, we will calculate c as uh, a plus b, so that is 3. Now, we will update our a as 2 and b as 3, right? Now, my i will be equal to 3, so now a is 2, b is 3, so I will calculate my c as 5 and now the value of a will be 3 and the value of b will be 5, right? So this is exactly what I have done in the code. And you see b is equal to 5 in my answer, right? So, what I can do now is, I can just return b at the end. So, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So, you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.